In this movie, I'm going to take you on a walkthrough of the Swing Thing library for iTunes, also basic installation, how to get the library into uh, a format that you can easily find the shows that you want to find so that you can play them, and uh, any other details that I can think of. So let's get started. Now, once you've received the Swing Thing Complete Library, um, it's going to come on an external hard drive, and you already have, right away, you have two options for how you would like to proceed. One option would be leave everything uh, on that external hard drive and plug that hard drive into your computer and use the external hard drive uh, in order to access your library. Another option, of course, is to copy the entire contents or even parts of the uh, external hard drive over onto your computer. And then that way you can disconnect the external hard drive and you don't have to leave that plugged in. Both methods work fine. There are a couple of uh, tricks I want to point out having to do with, um, uh, with those two options. And uh, we'll cover them both. In this particular case, I've already made a copy of the library onto my PC. And so when I open this folder up, here's the, the library. The library consists of um, uh, three primary sections and then some related items. The Swing Thing for iTunes library, which this says Swing Thing for iTunes 64 gigabyte USB, and if we double click on that folder, you'll see the Swing Thing HD library for iTunes. Now, there's also the Swing Thing HD library for broadcasters. The main difference between them is the way they're organized. They contain exactly the same material. Both, both of these libraries are a complete and full uh, copy of the entire Swing Thing library. They're just organized differently. The one for broadcasters is organized by show number. So when we look inside here, and then we'll go into the Swing Thing HD library for broadcasters, folder here. You'll see that you have a bunch of folders, each one counting up in 100 steps. So all the shows that begin with 100 would be in this folder. All the shows beginning with 1600 would be in that folder, etc. And if you look inside, let's look inside the 200 folder here. Now you've got these folders and each one of these is an individual show and what you're looking at is the show number. So for broadcasters the reason that I organized them this way was because broadcasters when they're picking shows for broadcast will need to go and pluck out of this library any of the specific shows that they would like to use and put those into their automation system and usually they do that once a week or once a month and it's a lot easier to do when you can just look by show number rather than trying to look it up by show name. So, for example, we look inside of this show number 204, you'll see that it consists of a number of tracks and a playlist. So this is easier uh, when you're a broadcaster to be able to go in and then they can just come in and grab all of these, put them into the automation system, tell it when to play it. And if they want to insert commercials between segments of the show, they can do it here. Every time Fred concludes a segment, he says something followed by on the swing thing. Then he pauses for a beat, then he continues to talk. So I separated those out. Every time he gave a commercial break cue, I would create a different file. So most of the shows are made up of anywhere from seven to ten. On average, it's seven or eight segments per show. That's real handy for broadcasters. But for home listeners, you may prefer a different method. The same method, in fact, that's used by iTunes, 
the iTunes music player. And that's the version of the show contained inside of this folder here. If we look inside of that, you're going to see that they're organized differently. So Swing Thing HD Library for iTunes folder. Go inside that. And here now you'll see that the shows are organized first by guest. And then if I come down a little ways, it goes from guest to theme. So shows that are themed don't have interviews in them, but they'll be based on a particular theme, whereas shows with guest in the title, those are the ones that actually have a interview. So that's the basic organization of the library. And so when you first receive this, you're going to get that and that, and then you're also going to get Swing Things Singles. Swing Things Singles is a copy of the Swing Thing HD library for broadcasters, but instead of having the shows broken up into multiple segments, all of those segments are combined into one larger file, and that is the complete show in one segment. And that's what's used in the Swing Thing singles. Now, the reason that we set them up this way was for previewing purposes. And we're going to talk here in a moment about Search and Play, which is an app that I created. You can see the folder for Search and Play up here. Search and Play can only use the Swing Things Singles folder. And as I'll demonstrate in a moment, if you are using Search and Play, you can then just click a player after you've found a show inside a Search and Play and preview it there. But these are all monophonic. So when I made copies of the Swing Thing HD library for broadcasters and squeezed them all down into a single larger file, I also told it to only record these shows in mono. So it combined the left and right stereo tracks from the broadcaster, which is, by the way, the same as the, the one for iTunes. Like I say, just organized differently. Both of these are in stereo, whereas this was converted into mono. The file size is also half as large for an individual show. And the reason that we did that was because at the time we were thinking that we may create a portable version that could go on a, an iPhone or a, an Android device or a, an iPad and that you could carry the library around with you. But even when it's squeezed down into mono, it's still 32 gigabytes, which is pretty large. Most people don't want to put that much uh, you know, onto a small portable device. But anyway, at the time, that's what we thought we would do. So the Search and Play app that I'm going to show you here in a moment can only use these in mono. And if you look inside here, you'll see that the way the shows are organized, each show has a single file by show number. So that's why we gave you three different versions of the library. Now. We'll install Search and Play here in a moment, but what I want to show you first is because we've already, in this particular case, I dragged the entire library over off of the external hard drive and put a copy of it on the computer's internal hard drive. I don't really need to keep the external one. So if the external one is plugged in after you've made a copy of this and the copy is complete, you're free to unplug that uh, hard drive I sent you and you can put it in a safe place. And then you'll be able to just access all the files directly on your own computer. But another option is don't drag this over. Keep this as an external hard drive. And everything will work just fine if you want to do it that way. There are a couple of minor details that I'll be covering about that. But in general, you can just use the external hard drive without having to copy anything over onto your computer. In either case, either you plugged in the external hard drive or you plugged it in, dragged everything over, and then removed the hard drive. In either case, as soon as that external hard drive is plugged in, the Windows Media Player will begin indexing it. 
and it will find all of those files on the external hard drive. Or if you copy the entire library over and then unplug the external hard drive, Windows Media Player will also begin indexing the local copy of all those files. My point being, you don't need to use Search and Play. You don't need to use iTunes. All you need to do is plug in the library or make a copy of it onto your computer and then just open up the media player. When you do, you're going to find the entire library in the media player. Now, it will probably take a little while for the computer to index all of these files. So you may not have all of the information. It may take a while for all of them to pop in, but that's just the first time it builds an index. Once it's done indexing, you can just immediately come in and access any of these shows anytime you like. So here's a show here. Let's ring them bells. Show 9-11. And go back to artist and you'll be able to see how the shows are organized by artists. So you can see like Artie Shaw has 10 different shows, 10 albums. That's what they mean when it says albums is a show. And so there are 10 different shows with Artie Shaw as a guest. Here you've got a couple of Dick Jurgens shows. So you can see by the icon how many shows there are. So anyway, that's, that's if you want to use the Windows Media Player, which is fine. It works just great. There are two other ways that you can do this. Search and Play, which we'll talk about next, comes in three flavors. There's one for the PC, which we'll be installing here in a moment, one for the Mac, and there's also one for FileMaker Go. And if you're familiar with FileMaker Go, that's an application. It's a free app that you can put onto your iPad. And uh, then you can install this FileMaker Go file uh, into the appropriate location. You'll get instructions with your iPad on how to move things into FileMaker Go, but it's not hard. And uh, then you can actually carry the library around with you. Now, it won't actually load up any of the song material, any of the show material. Um, what it will do instead is it will connect it'll connect to Swing Things Singles which is hosted on a server and then that way it'll stream it over the internet so you'll be listening to the Swing Things Singles using the search and play for FileMaker Go that will actually be streaming over the internet you select a show and you press play and then it will start to stream a moment later as you know after it spools up. Um, so that's pretty handy to know about. That's a new thing that we just came up with recently here at uh, Swing Thing. But in this case I'm going to install the PC version of the Search and Play app. So I'm just going to double click on the Search and Play installer and I'll say yes. It's okay and you just go through the wizard. You don't have to change anything on the wizard. You can just use all of its defaults. And I'll tell it to launch Search and Play when I click Finish here. The first time that Search and Play launches, you'll see this um, page with the click here button. If you previously installed Search and Play and then later on reinstall it for some reason, you may get some error messages the first time that you load it. Just click cancel on all of those and uh, then when you're done canceling just click here. The reason is is that it may be looking for the library from a previous installation of Search and Play and if you moved it to another location it wouldn't know where to find those uh, shows. So that's why you might get an error if you're doing a reinstall. But 
Uh, in this case, I'm just going to click here. This is a fresh install of Search and Play. And when you first install it, you're going to see this column here with nothing in it. That's okay. We need to do something first. We want to tell Search and Play where your library files are stored. So to do that, there's this black help tab up here in the top left corner. Click on it and then go to settings right here. Click on that and there's a gear icon and that's what you want to click next. So we'll click that and now what you want to do is you want to find your Swing Thing library. So in this case it's on my desktop and I'm going to double click on that library and what we want to select is Swing Thing Singles. And you'll see Swing Thing Singles displayed down here. And when you see that, just go ahead and click OK. So now we've told Search and Play where to find the audio files. Now, if those audio files weren't on your desktop, maybe you left them on the external hard drive, then when you clicked on the gear icon, you'd want to navigate to the Swing Thing Singles folder on the external drive. Just remember, if you unplug the external drive later, Search and Play won't know where to find those files, so you'll have to plug it back in in order to be able to preview the music. I'm going to click now on this tab that says Shows up in the upper left-hand corner to get back. And at this point now, we can begin searching. Now, here's the search box. And this is a smart search list, and we'll talk about these other two in a moment. But the smart search list is a very convenient way to find what you're looking for with the fewest number of clicks. Let's say, for example, that we wanted to, um, oh, I don't know, let's look for Gene Kelly. Just a random name to pick. And I'll just click on Do This Search, or you can hit the Enter or Return key to do the search. Let's see. K-E-L-L-Y. Let's try that. I didn't find anything when I typed. Oh, Gene Kelly, I think is G-E-N-E, -E, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, that's why I didn't find him. Okay, well, by searching just for Kelly, it found here Paula Kelly, she's a guest, and here's Kelly under Ray Everly. So you can see here, this is a show with a guest, Ray Everly and Paula Kelly. So you can see that whatever you're searching for will come up here in the playlist in red. And this column here that says hits that has the red numbers that is the thing that makes this search so special it looks not only in the playlist but it also looks in the title section up here and based upon what it finds it will de decide like for example if there's a guest with that search term it's going to give it a couple of extra ticks so two of these four just came from it being in the guest column. And then because the title of the show has Kelly, your search term, in it, it also gave it a couple of extra ticks there. That's why you get a total of four. You get two here and two here. Any time that the name appears down in the playlist down below, it gets one additional tick. One tick for every time it shows up down here. Two ticks for every time it shows up in the title or the theme or guest area. So let's say, for example, we look at Johnny Green. So Johnny Green here doesn't, um, even though it's a Johnny Green show, we were searching for Kelly. It found Kelly down here, so it gave it two ticks. So the, the idea here is that when you want to find something, you want to find the show that has the most of the thing you were looking for. And then once you select a show, because we went into help and settings and told it where the music files are located, you can now press the play button and preview the show. So that's very convenient.
Sometimes you want to do a little bit more advanced searching though. So you could go to the availability list. Try that method. Now the availability list works differently. What it does is you have all these columns with these little black dots and if you hover over the column heading it'll tell you what the black dot represents. So in this case whenever you see a black dot in this column it's telling you that it's a jazz show. Now by jazz I should be specific. That's subjective. It was in Fred's opinion he considered some shows to have what he used to call honking sax players. And he'd say when you have a honking sax there are some people who just don't like jazz and that'll turn them right off. If you're a radio station and let's say your format is easy listening then it would make sense that you wouldn't want to overdo the jazz perhaps. Maybe you're looking for a show that has a lot of vocals in it. You can click on that column and these if you click them, click them they're toggles. So the first time it's sorted from top to bottom and if you click it again it will reverse sort. So here you can see all these shows in this column with the black dot. All of those shows have a vocalist. Now the C one, each as you hover over each, it tells you what it is. So C is about composers. So if you want to find a show about composers, click on that column. All the shows about composers will be listed there. Very handy. So that's another way of doing it. So let's just uh, pick uh, something here. Let's uh, Captain and Tennille part one. I know Captain and Tennille. Tennille? Well, <laughs> they also did easy listening. Uh, um, <laughs> that's another story. But listen to the show. You'll find out. Because they also uh, do jazz standards. In this particular case, though, I'm clicking on it so that you can see that this shows the playlist just like it does on the Smart Search. But in the Show Details tab, it also shows you these checkboxes and these fields, and they're all searchable here. So if you wanted to do a search, you've got all of these little X's down here. Those can be clicked the radio button here that says yes and no for available for broadcast uh, which means that uh, that the show uh, is a good quality show. There are a few shows that Fred did that for one reason or another had some flaws in them. Some broadcasters might be picky about that so they could search just for shows that were made uh, designated as available for broadcast. But what you can do is you see this blue button up here, Advanced Find Mode. If you click on that, you can enter things in these fields and then it'll search for them. So let's give it an example. We see here that Captain and Tennille is a two-part show. It tells you here part one of two parts. So Captain and Tennille, Tennille part one. If I were to click up here to do an advanced search, Now I can tick any combination of these or even enter something about the show's name. Maybe I'm looking for a show that is that has Miller in the title and I want it to be laid back and mostly vocals. Let's see if we can find that. So that's what I'm searching for. Now I just click the blue do find button up here. Okay, didn't find anything. So let's let's try something else here. We'll come back in here and uh, let's just uh, let's just choose. Oh, I don't know, up and down because I'm sure we've got something with Miller, right? So we'll do a find. Okay, let's just uh, mostly relaxed and mostly vocals. Do you find? There we go. So it, you know, you'll have to do some searching to see what you want, but then it'll bring up all the shows that matched just those criteria. And again, you can 
click on the name of the show to go to it, and then of course you can just hit play up here to listen to it. So the Smart Search list, list is the one you'll normally want to use because it's the easiest one to use by far. So if I just click in up here, type Miller, and tell it to do the search. It'll find all the shows that have Miller. That would include anybody by the name of Miller. So if we look on the Johnny Desmond thing here, you can see that uh, when uh, he was with the uh, Miller Band and the Army Air Force Band. His name is his name Miller is there. Okay, I think that's enough for search and play for now. I don't want to I don't want to overkill this thing. Now the last thing I'm going to show you is how to use iTunes, the iTunes Music Player, in order to list and play the shows. Now the, you don't have to do this, but you can and if you want wanted to do it then it would be um, well it has a couple of nice features about it. I, the main reason I can think of wanting to do that is if you're already a subscriber to Apple Music and you've bought music from them and you've got your library and you've got iTunes installed on your PC and you want to add the uh, Swing Thing library to iTunes so that you have everything in one place and you only use one player, well that makes good sense. So um, if you want to do that, I'm going to just type in iTunes down here in the search bar. Now I've already got the iTunes app installed, but if I didn't, I could install it by just going down to see web results and then it would find the iTunes Music Store link here. Download iTunes for free. And I would just go down to install and update. Click on that. Select your platform. And then click the link here that says get it from the Microsoft Store. All you'd have to do then is Start the download, and once it's downloaded, launch it. Uh, launch the installer, just like uh, all the other Windows installers, and uh, it'll just be installed in no time. I've already got iTunes installed, so let me just show you how you add the Swing Thing library to it. So I'm going to just type in iTunes again, and this time I'm going to launch the iTunes app. Now I've got some of the shows in here now and that's because I was working with this earlier today but right now I've uh, already got some material in here and that's because I was practicing with this earlier um, but normally the way that you would bring all this material in uh, you would do this from the version of the library and the location of the library that uh, that you have decided on. For example, if you want to use the one on the external hard drive or do you want to use one that you copied over onto your computer. Either version of the library will work. But what you would do is double click on the Swing Thing for iTunes 64 gigabyte USB version of the folder and then find the actual library, the Swing Thing HD library for iTunes and then you would just bring that over, drag it in, let go of the mouse, and it will start to copy um, or build an index of the shows. Now I say copy or build an index. What I mean by that is let's look under the edit menu real quick here under preferences. And we'll go to the advanced tab. You see this checkbox that says copy files to iTunes media folder when adding to library? I would suggest before you actually drag the, the uh, library for iTunes into the iTunes app so that it starts to build an index of all the shows, that you decide as, whether you want to have all of those show files 
physically copied off of the external drive, or for that matter, even off of the internal folder, like if I'd already copied the entire contents or, or at least the Swing Thing HD library for iTunes, if I'd already copied that onto my computer and I wanted iTunes to use that, then I would want to make sure that this checkbox is not checked. And the reason for that is that it's going to otherwise, if this is checked, it's going to make duplicate copies of this entire folder and put it inside of iTunes music folder, because iTunes has its own music folder. So um, you don't need to have two copies of my point. So if you've already got all the files on your computer, just uncheck this box, or make sure it's unchecked, before you drag this over into the iTunes app. If, on the other hand, everything is on the external hard drive and you didn't put a copy on your computer and you do not want to have all of that music actually copied over into iTunes, but just have iTunes know where the all the shows are, then just leave this unchecked and then when you drag this over it's not going to copy anything it's going to build an internal reference so that it knows where to find them at that location whether it's external or internal doesn't matter but it will by having this unchecked it won't make any copies but it will add add them to your swing thing library but if you check this it'll actually physically copy the files over and even if you already have them on your computer so I just wanted to make sure that that was clear. And then once you've made that decision, now you can decide if you want to bring this uh, into your uh, iTunes library, then you could just grab this and drag it in. And you'll see the word link there. That's because I didn't check that box. If I did check the box, it would, it, it would instead say copy. Okay, so that's that's how that works. But the, uh, the there are some advantages, I, I would say some, but not major advantages. For one, like if, you, if you're in iTunes and you click on albums, and then you click on a show, you'll be able to see the playlist. You know, you'll be able to see the, the list of segments. So if you, own, if, if you knew, for example, that you only wanted to listen to, you know, for a little while and then stop it, well, I don't know why you would want to do this, honestly, but if you wanted to, you can, and that's why I just thought I'd cover this part, too. So uh, that is the basic technique for getting it into iTunes, but you don't have to bring it into iTunes at all, and you don't have to use search and play. Just by plugging in the external hard drive or copying the hard drive onto your computer, you can just go into Windows Media Player, and it will just immediately start showing all the shows. Now, if you just plugged in the hard drive, it's going to take a while for Windows to index the whole library. Keep that in mind. So it may not show everything right away. Um, but anyway, that's basically it. Um, there's nothing else I can talk about here, so I'm just going to end this movie. But I would like to thank you for uh, getting the Swing Thing library. I really hope you enjoy it, and as Fred would always say, keep on swinging. <laughs>